All right, so tell us about this blending of two worlds here. Yeah, so, you know, actually, uh, my buddy DV in here, um, he runs the uh, DEF CON unofficial shoot. And so DEF CON is the world's largest ostensibly hacking conference. Mm -hmm. Happens in Las Vegas every year. Has gone for a long time now. Yeah. And um, so on InRange, we cover a lot of topics, and one of them is the uh, the need for the consi the need for the consideration of digital rights along with firearms rights. Mm -hmm. And those two worlds are actually far more similar than different. Oh yeah, and that's how we met because I go to your I go to your DefCon unofficial shoot every year, and we've done some in range videos on that. But I was thinking maybe we'll talk a little bit about what that convergence really is. Absolutely, that's it's outside of the hacker world. People think, well, those are those people in the tech sector. They don't they live in the Bay Area? Mm -hmm. I've heard there's not a lot of guns there. When in fact, many people in the tech community, a they they like firearms because they are technically minded, and firearms are mechanically interesting systems. B, a lot of us have enough discretionary income to enjoy them. Firearms are not cheap, but we can appreciate buying good quality and using a tool. And that's really the, the C, the third point is, many people in the tech world view technology as a tool. You'll often hear the argument made in the gun land that, well, a, a gun is like a hammer. I mean, I could build a house or I could bludgeon a man to death. And you'll see that in the, in the hacker world, people objecting to laws that try to be passed. Well, you can't have this piece of software. You can't have this exploit. And I, I, my team and I do covert entry work. I mean, I have a ton of lock picks and manipulation tools and the digital guys in our house, they're breaking into networks. You can have exploit tools that are either using to aid in someone's defense and, and testing and red teaming against the defender so they get better, or you can you know, be an Eastern European cyber criminal trying to steal somebody's Bitcoin or buy, buy an Alexis, I don't know. Yeah, right. No, that's true. And so, so I, I think what it boils down to is, so we have a video on InRange where we talked about the uh, burgeoning regulation of malware and R&D on malware. And so mm -hmm. what's happening is you see these types of laws that are forming about what they consider cyber weapons, yeah. which a cyber weapon is nothing more than a piece of code that can be used for good or for bad or for neither. And firearms themselves can also be used for good or for bad or for neither. They're a tool that are independently, the only differentiation between good or bad is the person you're manipulating the tool. Yeah. And so if you are a freedom conscious person, whether you are a digital rights freedom conscious person or a firearms digitally conscious per or conscious person, the reality is those two worlds are so much the same mm -hmm. that either one of these the argument can be made that you should not have either or you should be able to have both. Yeah. And so the, the, the hacker guys or the hacker side of the fence, a lot of them don't get enough firearms time. They, they maybe aren't anti-firearms, but they see it as a, a, a tool. Mm -hmm. But so the DEF CON shoot provides an opportunity for people yeah. to come out that normally couldn't necessarily get access to cool firearms like machine guns and such absolutely and get guns into the hands of hackers to give them a safe environment to actually experience a kinetic weapon mm -hmm. as opposed to a piece of malware for example yeah what's the everyone knows what's the best way to turn a non-shooter into a gun advocate get him out shooting get him out shooting yep. and so many people either because they live in california or they live in a big city where guns aren't common or they're how many of our friends are from overseas and we see them at these big events once a year that's true and I started taking foreigners especially. I took some Canadian friends and other people. I said, let's, let's go to the range. And in Vegas, go to the range usually means go pay overpriced dollars for ammo <laughs> yeah. and rent a real machine gun, woo, woo, woo. And I said, look, between all of us, we got enough steel. We could accelerate lead on our own. Let's just go out to BLM land. I talked to some of the locals here and I said, look, man, Vern, like, where do you guys just go on a weekend? You don't go to the hokey ranges. He's like, oh yeah, well, you can go out to this canyon. You can go to this, you know, dry creek bed over here. I said, let's just do it. And we did, we all just went out and everyone said, this was way more fun. I felt like I didn't have a guy breathing over my shoulder and I paid way less for ammo. Are you gonna do this next year? I was like, I guess, but I didn't really like getting the sun beat down on me. I said, would everyone kick in a couple bucks? I'll rent like some tables so we're not laying guns in the dirt. I'll rent a couple canopies. And that grew and grew and grew to the point that now about 150, 200 people every year before DEF CON starts come out, sight unseen, like they don't always bring their own steel, they don't bring any supplies. I just make a effectively a pop-up gun range happen and it exists for one day and then it vanishes from the desert and everything is out there. All the amenities are out there, the eyes, the ears, everyone who's local or flew in with firearms brings their steel. And we have foreigners saying, I cannot, this, this is, we thought this was a fantasy in America that you can just have all these different guns and just share and just share them and try them. It's wonderful. Here, here, it. Here's what's awesome when you go to the DEF CON shoot, the actual location that's being used for the shoot is left cleaner than it started. Mm -hmm. So you, when you think of hackers, you think of these people that look like weirdos. They got pink hair, purple hair, they got piercings or whatever. They got leather jackets and scary stuff or they got symbols that don't make sense to you because it's something you're not familiar with. And you know what? If you look at the gun world from the outside, it looks the same way. 
-hmm. People look scary. They do, depending on your perspective. The reality is everyone that's freedom conscious, for whatever their particular motivation is, we need to bridge those worlds and realize that we're all in that same boat together. Mm -hmm. And expanding that understanding and, and reaching across the aisle, to use a political term, and realize that there's a new breed of gun owner, the younger ones that are different, maybe look a little different, or maybe even have somewhat different political views than you mm -hmm. did in the past. But the reality is freedom is the goal. Yeah. That's what DEF CON brings to the table. You'll have a, a lady out there that's in her 80s. You'll have a punk rocker. You'll have someone that looks like a street person. You'll have a nerd yeah. all together having a good time in a very safe environment shooting guns. Mm -hmm. And I think that understanding of a broader firearms community, as well as the firearms community understanding that digital rights are just as important as their guns, is an incredibly important message. And it's one that I think will expand um, our freedoms in both ways broadly. Absolutely. That's the goal.